there have been numerous reports suggesting that discussions are already taking place between France and Niger's military regarding the potential reduction of French troop presence. Thousands of demonstrators have gathered outside the French military base in the capital city of Niamey. The leaders of this year's coup in Niger have been advocating for the withdrawal of 1,500 French troops stationed there. In response, Paris has declined, citing its refusal to acknowledge the authority of the junta. The crisis in Niger began in July when President Mohamed Bazoum was overthrown in a coup. The government has already disapproved of the agreements permitting France to maintain a presence within our territory, deeming their position unlawful. The streets of Niamey are basically empty and there are several military bases which not only houses Nigerian military personnel but also host a contingent of approximately 1,000 to 1,500 French forces. Demonstrators have been gathering at this base over the past few days, demanding the departure of these forces from the country. However, France has not relocated any of them thus far. This situation coincides with the French ambassador to Niger refusing to vacate the country. Essentially, there were significant demonstrations with large crowds over the weekend, but the current gathering appears to be smaller in scale compared to what was observed previously. The Prime Minister disclosed during a press conference yesterday that an agreement with ECOWAS would be reached shortly. He also seized the opportunity to denounce the sanctions and embargoes imposed on the country following the coup, branding them as unjust, inhumane, and illegal. He mentioned that they have taken steps to formally register their complaints against these sanctions, although he didn't specify the exact venue for these complaints, whether it be before the ECOWAS court or the international community or international tribunals like those related to trade. He emphasized the detrimental impact of these sanctions on the country. Furthermore, he discussed the relationship with France, emphasizing their demand for France to depart from the nation. In addition to these matters, he addressed various challenges confronting the country, such as the significant issues inherited by the military junta upon their arrival and the substantial salary obligations the junta is attempting to fulfill for the civil service. Currently, there are civil servants who have not received their salaries for over a month, contributing to the growing challenges in the region. It's worth recalling that in the early days of the coup, Nigeria cut off electricity to this nation, and this situation persists. Nigeria, along with other countries, imposed sanctions, and on Monday, it was announced that the airspace adjacent to the military base behind me has been reopened for international flights. However, special flights, military operations, and other exceptional flights require specific permissions to traverse Nigerian airspace. It is expected that there are negotiations taking place between the French military and the Niger military. These discussions are aimed at orchestrating a partial withdrawal of the French military presence in the region, although it may not entail the complete withdrawal of the 1,500 French troops currently stationed there. The French government has equally emphasized that the engagement in discussions with the military junta in Niger is not an act of recognizing or endorsing the junta's authority. Instead, these talks are viewed as a technical dialogue between military entities. It is clarified that the French military cannot remain inactive or idle, particularly since cooperation in counterterrorism efforts has been terminated. Consequently, they are seen as having no operational purpose and should depart from Niger. This action is not taken as an act of compliance with an order but rather a practical necessity. As for the current stage of these discussions, they expected to conclude shortly, leading to the withdrawal of French troops from Niger. It is likely that these troops may relocate to Chad, where a French military base still exists, or return directly to France. Regarding France's aerial operations, it remains to be seen how they will be affected. In terms of the United States, they are in a distinct position, and any potential withdrawal of their forces may not occur as swiftly, as they have not formally acknowledged the coup, characterizing it as an attempted coup or an effort to disrupt constitutional order. The French government does not openly acknowledge the occurrence of a coup. However, once they officially recognize the coup's legitimacy, they will be legally obligated to withdraw their forces. The acknowledgement of a coup is a prerequisite for their departure. With the French troops leaving, there will be a void left behind.
It is essential to clarify that French troops are deployed at the request of governments, and they do not recognize the new government in Miami. Their presence is aimed at providing assistance and support rather than domination. If a government no longer desires French cooperation, the troops will have to withdraw. When French troops do depart, it signifies consequences for those countries expelling Western forces, as it can lead to a security deterioration and increased activity from terrorist groups, as witnessed in Mali and Burkina Faso. Regarding the French troops' departure, military leaders may view it as a significant victory and claim that France yielded to their request to exit the country. However, it's important to note that the French ambassador remains due to being formally expelled and his eventual withdrawal will not be immediate but is an inevitable step. The decision to keep the ambassador in place is not an act of recognition of the new co-leadership but rather a diplomatic stance. Ultimately, the French president has determined that the ambassador will eventually withdraw but not under immediate pressure. The shift in France's stance regarding its troop presence is primarily driven by its interests in Niger, particularly related to combating Islamic insurgency. French troops were deployed to assist the government against this threat, but cooperation with the new government is necessary for their continued presence.